Cleaning up, guys. Cleaning up, man. I'm, I'm, I'm cleaning up. Got to get that strange from out of the nose. Getting ready to have some dinner tonight, guys, with the... Uh, it's been a long time since, you know, I've met uh, some of my coworkers. So we're here in Chicago right now. And we are getting ready to go to dinner in probably like an hour. Waiting for a few people to arrive in the airport. But I wanted to make this video real quick for you guys. Um, let me see what I can get myself situated at. Let's see. Do I want the view? Do I want the view? I'll give you guys the view. Nah. Let's see. The view is uh, nothing. Nothing spectacular. Uh, Chicago, right? Good Chicago. Nothing. Nothing magnificent. I am on a high floor this time. Uh, but um, the question came up the other day in our meet and greet about you know once you get to the bag. What to do with it? I think it came from my brother Christian, right? Our brother Christian asked the question. He asked the question of, hey, Antoine, can you start talking about things that you can do once you get to, you know, a six-figure salary and so forth and where you need to put your money to in order for you to make a whole bunch of money? So here's the thing, right? I stand by a few principles in life. The majority of millionaires are created based on their retirement and real estate, okay? Retirement and real estate. So what I would say is this, and, and believe me, I am not a tax professional, but this is how I do my thing, okay? Let me just make that clear. I'm not a tax professional. You wanna always consult with a tax professional. I have a fantastic one here in Austin if you ever need her. Uh, she helps me save a whole bunch of money, but you guys saw how much money uh, that I make on a traditional year. That's a lot of money, okay? I do my best to reduce my tax burden a lot. When you start to make, you know, upwards of uh, $100,000, $200,000, $300,000, $500,000, $500, that's a lot of money that Uncle Sam would actually take from you if you don't have the correct tax strategies in place. And I want to talk about the two different tax strategies that I use in order for me to, you know, continue to grow my overall wealth, right? The first one I'm going to say is this. Is this is something that you guys are going to get. Let's say you're making $100,000. I want you to focus on building your retirement plan with a 401k, okay? 401ks, most companies offer them, right? Uh, you can contribute to the max of 19500 I make sure that I contribute the max every single year, 19500 My company matches that. So they match just about every single thing that I contribute in my 401k, okay? Uh, so that grows on a yearly basis, an annual basis, without it being touched. It's magnificent, okay? That's what I do. And here's the thing. When you contribute 19500 every single year, that is uh, basically reduces your income, right? So if you're $100,000, you contribute 19500 Let's just say that's 20000 Now your take-home income is $80,000. Now with a 401k, uh, you know, you aren't taxed right away you're, you're taxed on the back end when you are in your retirement and you start to collect money then you are taxed on the larger sum you know that has some benefits that that that, that could be something that people uh frown upon right there's other ways that you can do it I also invest in a roth ira and i contribute about six thousand dollars a year to my roth ira that means also that there's no tax benefits to my roth ira um, with that $6,000 because typically what happens with the Roth RA is it's kind of the same thing as a 401k. You contribute to it up to a certain amount a year, $6,000 and so forth. And then it is taxed at the end of your retirement when you are wanting to withdraw money. Okay. So these are funds that go directly into your account. Okay. Uh, and they are taxed on the back end. There's a traditional IRA, right? There's a traditional IRA that it is taxed when you are putting money into it and then on the back end, it is not taxed. That's not what I do. I don't do a traditional IRA. It is because I've you know, set it up that way from the get-go. I uh, always had a Roth IRA. Well, I didn't always have a Roth IRA. I had a Roth IRA like three years ago. I started that, but I always had a 401k because that's the only thing I knew about. There's 401ks or Roth 401ks as well too. Uh, a lot of companies don't offer that but if your company offers that you should definitely consider that the difference between a 401k and a, a roth 401k is that the 401k 
there's tax benefits uh, uh, on the back end, or there's you're going to get taxed on the back end when you're withdrawing. On a Roth 401k, you are going to be paying tax on the front end while you're putting money into it. Therefore, when your money grows to a larger pool, about a million dollars, you don't pay taxes on that when you retrieve the money. But that's not the biggest point because you gotta think about it. We're talking about twenty thousand dollars a year. That's a good amount of money. When we're talking about six thousand dollars a year. That's not where you know the um, that's not a, a, a large tax saving strategy. The tax saving strategy is this, guys. A tax saving strategy is creating a business for yourself. Creating a business for yourself. Let me just give you an example, okay? Um, prior to two thousand and eighteen, I didn't have any businesses. Didn't have any. Um, you know, when I was in Malaysia, I didn't have a business and I was making over $200,000 a year. So just imagine how much the IRS is taking from me, right? I'm, I'm in a higher tax bracket, right? So IRS is taking all this money from me, all this money from me, all this money from me. And I figure that there is a way that you can actually uh, reduce the amount of money that the IRS takes from you if you were to own a business, okay? So I started Black Heights. Black Heights is a coaching company to help people uh, get into IT as well as to help people climb the ladder. I have a passion for it. So I started my business, even without me knowing all the tax strategies, the IRS tax codes and so forth. But what I found out, guys, when I fell into uh, starting my business, because I started Black Heights as an escort. And this is another thing that I want you guys to do your research on. You can start it as LLC, uh, whatever business that you have, or whatever business that you want to start. You can start it off however you want. S Corp, LSC, LLC, whatever. I started mine as an S Corp. And with an S Corp, it is a pass through. So the money that you make on your S Corp, your income is going to your bottom line and your overall tax and your personal tax. The money that you lose on your S Corp goes in the bottom line of your personal taxes as well, right? So one of the things that I did when I started my business, Black Heights, is you know I started to look at the overall tax codes. Well, when you start a business, let's say you create a website, that's a business expense. That automatically takes off your overall income already because you are the one that's funding it. So that's a write-off, right? Any sort of funding capital that you give to your business is a write-off up until a certain amount. I think it's up to like, uh, I think $50,000, if it's less than $50,000, the majority of what you funded uh, to your business is a write-off. Any sort of marketing that you do for your business, any sort of, uh, 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 at one point in time, it was meals. Now I believe it's only uh, you know 50% of meals or things like that, it's a write-off. Anytime you are doing any sort of business, uh, any sort of, uh, let's just say you are using your office in your house uh, for to conduct business, to do coaching calls and so forth, that's a write-off. Not on your entire mortgage or your entire uh, a rent, if you are renting, it is a portion of that if you allocate that certain amount, uh, uh, if you break it up. So let's just say you have a four bedroom house, you use one of the houses. Well, that's uh, based if you are renting that house for $1,000, that's $250, $250 a month that you can write off because you're using your office uh, and it's an expense into the business deduction. So what I did was, I started my business, right? Saw how I can invest into um, my business and how I can leverage it to reduce my overall tax burden to the government. So things like buying cameras, things like um, building a website, things like going to dinner a lot of the times because I talked about the you know Black Heights with my wife, my kids, and so forth. So anytime we went to dinner, anytime we went to venues, to, to, to the wineries and you know to all those other places, I'm able to write that off because it's a business expense, right? Any of that is basically a, a business expense, so therefore it comes off your bottom line. So if I'm making $100,000 a year and I create a business and I'm able to write off, let's just say $250,000 or $250 uh, uh, per month, uh, that comes out to be, what is that, $6,000 uh, for rent, right? Because you are using your business uh, or you're using one bedroom in your house um, to conduct whatever business it is that you own, that's $6,000 a year, guys, that you can write off in your taxes or on your uh, income. So if you have $100,000 a year, you know, you are contributing to your 401k, right? $80,000 because it's $20,000, maxing that out. 
six thousand dollars because you are or as a business expense right so uh that comes off of your income as well too so you continue to do that and you will start to see as you invest more into your business even though it has a lot to do with your personal life you're going to be able to reduce your overall taxes therefore you're able to save more money you're able to save more money that way so that's the way i'll do it guys not only that I invest in real estate and of course with real estate is, is a business right and with you know things like uh having to have um you know certain things in the uh uh my real estate properties fixed that's a write-off um paying paying my property manager it's a write-off uh seeking new tenants and marketing it's a write-off so you start to see overall that i'm able to write off a good let's just say 200 300 dollars a year right just living a normal life uh by um you know having these businesses that i have and i'm working towards right and the income that i get on that stuff right the income that i get on that stuff uh it it, it goes to the bottom line as well too but if, overall if you're operating at a higher level if you're operating at a higher level in the corporate world and you really haven't been able to you know transfer that into your businesses just yet because you haven't given it a full 100 percent well, the majority of the time, you're going to lower your tax burden. So although I make, you know, let's just say $700,000 a year, I'm only taxed like I'm making about $200,000 a year, right? But I'm able to live a life of, you know, luxury uh, by having, um, you know, a higher income, right? Because I spend it on the things that I could want to spend it towards or spend it on the things that I can spend it towards. So that's how I do it, guys. That's how you save more money. That's how you keep more money. That's how you invest more money and so forth uh, into yourself, as well as to growing your overall wealth, guys. Uh, again, I want to make sure that I make this very, very clear to you guys. Invest into your 401k. If there's a raw 401k, go that route. I think that's a perfect route. I don't have a raw 401k, so I don't wanna talk about that. Um, and that's something that you should look into. Uh, but when I did the comparisons uh, between a Roth 401k and a true 401k, a lot of people saw there were more benefits in a Roth 401k, but my company doesn't offer that. But either way, if your company doesn't offer it, go with a 401k, max it out every single year. Um, here's the other piece of it, uh, real estate. Real estate's a huge piece of it as well because as a business, you can grow your overall net worth over the long term with real estate properties. Uh, guys, you guys saw the real estate property, uh, the real estate one-on-one video that I did with uh, uh, some of the patrons. Um, I can do a real estate 102, all right, to, to give you guys a little bit how I was able to, you know, create $1.4 million in real estate uh, properties or in real estate assets for myself. Uh, that made me a millionaire. So uh, that's how you become a millionaire these days, right? You you have to invest in your, uh, your retirement because that is an asset. You also want to invest into things like real estate. It's simple as that. Like there is no other ways that you can actually do that. You want to, you know, stick with the tried and true. I think overall, one of the things is, is that you want to keep as much money in your pocket or not have Uncle Sam uh, tell you where you should be putting your money um, and uh, taking your money and doing what they want to do with it. And the way how I was able to uh, keep the majority of my money or at least put it towards the things that I care about to grow my long term future is by starting a business. And Black Heights is a big part of that. Black Heights. You know, I uh, got Bima, uh, STL Capital, which is my real estate company on there. And I have 11 properties under that. Um, also have, um, you know, uh, uh, another escort that's uh, attached to my name uh, for my daughter's bakery, right? Which is, you know, I loan money to and, you know, we're able to write off things from that perspective as well, too. So, guys, that's that's how you do it. It's pretty simple. Again, I will tell you this. I am not a tax advisor. I'm just giving you guys a game on how you can do it. These are principles or these are things that most people do. That's how they're able to save their money. That's how they're able to grow their wealth. And overall, uh, they're able to get rich. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Um, this is a personal video uh, for my patrons and how I actually do it myself. And I hope you guys enjoy this video. Guys, thank you so much for being a uh, patron. Uh, thank you so much for uh, supporting Black Heights. Uh, I love this community. I got an opportunity to meet each and every one of you. Uh, I see this thing continue to grow, and you are certainly part of it. And this is the video that I wanted to uh, give you guys because you guys asked for it. Continue to ask for videos, and I'll be able to create them for you. Until next time, y'all. Peace.